Welcome to Table Talk, where each week I unpack insights from Christian theology and spirituality that help you become a more thoughtful, calm, and just a wonderful human being. My name is Brett Tilford, and today I want to talk to you about one more connection I see between an insight from the book Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed and our emotional spiritual life. So if you're interested in a bit broader introduction to Syed's book, you can find that in a previous episode I did uh, titled Fail Your Way to Success. All right, so here's the other big idea from Syed's book that I gleaned. Uh, it's this iteration, rather than a master plan, is almost always the wisest way forward. So, so what does Syed mean by this? Well, we're always going for the big change, the massive overhaul, the sweeping reform that will change everything, <laughs> when the reality is that we're better off, as Syed says, tinkering, tweaking, and learning from practical mistakes. For example, perhaps your grades are currently a mess, and so you go ahead and you read a book, or you watch a video, or you hear an inspiring talk, and then what do you tell yourself? You say, I'm gonna change everything. And so you spend a week making a master plan of all the changes you're gonna do. Like, I'm gonna change um, like when you study, and how you study and who you study with and you know on and on and on and you launch out and either a you get completely overwhelmed with all the changes or b you execute the plan only to realize huh well most maybe all of these things didn't really work the way i imagined they would and of course studying right this is just one example it could be anything from growing your department at work, to improving your marriage or your prayer life. We're, we're all tempted by the, the seductive call of the master plan, the, the big thing that will fix all our problems. And Syed, he actually gives a really insightful story of this from the business world. It's in the form of a narrative about the company Unilever and a problem they faced in making detergent. So basically the process is they would boil together a bunch of chemicals in a vat and they'd force that brew through a nozzle at incredibly high um, pressure and speed. And out the other end came a vapor and a powder. The vapor was siphoned away. The powder, that's what we know as, as like a detergent, um, granular detergent. So here's the problem. The problem was that the nozzle, it just didn't work smoothly. It was constantly getting blocked. They had to shut down production because the, the size of the grains coming out was just very inconsistent. This led to inefficiencies. It cost them a boatload of money. And so they turned to a team of really bright mathematicians and engineers. And these were, I mean, they were experts in like high pressure systems and fluid dynamics. And they said, innovate us a new nozzle. And so they did. They delved deeper and deeper into the problem, and they studied it from like every possible angle, and they drew up sophisticated equations, and they eventually came out with a new design. And guess what? Didn't work. So in desperation, Unilever turned to a team of biologists. These biologists knew like nothing about fluid dynamics, but they did have an understanding of evolution and the concept of tinkering and iteration. And so here's what they did. They took 10 copies of the nozzle as it currently stood, and they applied a small change, like a different kind of change, but a small one to change to each one. And then they tested them. And of course, one of them outperformed the others just a smidge. And then they took that winning nozzle, and they did it again. They made 10 versions of that winning nozzle, made a slight change, and retested it. And so they did this over and over and over. It took them 45 generations of nozzles, 449 failures, but at the end of the process, their nozzle was freaking awesome. And what's interesting is that, of course, like they, they couldn't have known this from the beginning. Like They had no master plan. But what they did was follow a simple formula of test A, test B, choose the one that did a little better, and then make another test. And this is, of course, what we call iteration. So, coming back to our lives, because, of course, this is not a table talk about detergent, I think the reason we don't opt for this strategy is that we fear it will take too long and we're discouraged by the small progress. I mean, who, who says, my goal this week is to get 2% better? Like, who tweets that? Who puts that on social media? Uh, like, your, your annual goals, you know, my year, in goals like, I want to be 2% better. Like, no, 
But just imagine, here's the thing. If, if your marriage was 2% better this week than last week, and then you did that again and again and again. Or what if your department at work was 2% better these coming two weeks as opposed to the previous two weeks? Or your connection to God was 2% better, right? But too often we're unsatisfied with 2% and we wanna shoot for 50% better like today. And it's called the lure of the radical innovation. The one change that changes it all. Like we love the quick fix, don't we? But so often the master plan doesn't pan out and we're stuck with 0% better or perhaps slightly worse. So today, don't despise small beginnings. Test something out, try it, tweak it, track your progress and see if you can get just 2% better. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this content, please click the like button, comment below. Uh, if you know someone who could benefit from it, share it. And to ensure you don't miss any future episodes, you can go on YouTube or any podcast outlet and search Brett Sulford Table Talk. Have a good one. Grace and peace.